Hi, Patricia, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. No. All right, thank you. Good to see you all. All right. Good to see you too. Yeah. All right, I'm just trying to set up the recording. Just give me a second. Is Adam going to join us? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right. So Patricia is our coach for today. Um, she's going to be taking you on um, what you've learned so far. Um, I believe you've learned a lot. And so just some sort of revision, going through the things you've learned, how you've been able to put them to practice. That's what we want to do today. And um, Patricia is um, a web designer, am I right? Yeah, yeah. She, yes. um, she believes in, um, she helps set priorities, building entrepreneurs' mindsets, holding relationships and all that. So I believe you're going to get a lot from today's session. So Patricia, over to you. Thank you so much for joining us again. Hi. Um so I'm going to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect from this session. I mean, I know that you guys have learned a lot over the last few weeks since it started. Okay. And, um, you know, if there are any other questions of stuff that you've learned that I can input in, of course, I'm happy to help. But I think, you know, looking at what you guys have been going over um, in the camp, in the boot camp, I would think that the biggest and based on what I was doing my lesson on like relationships and you know balance and stuff like that I would <clears throat> I want to say that my biggest takeaway for you guys I hope is that as you're trying to build your business that you make the time for yourself because I know for me as an entrepreneur who's also a mother because as you can see my son is right here <laughs> um, <laughs> you know the, the big thing is making sure that you don't forget yourself while you're trying to run your business and take care of your family and all that stuff. So I know when I had had my session a couple of weeks ago, the ladies that I talked to said that they sing and read books and do stuff like that. So I hope that you guys also have things that you do for yourself outside of your business so that you can take care of yourself while trying to take care of everybody else. Cause I know as women, sometimes we take on a lot and we forget that we should be at the top of the list along with, you know, everyone else. So do you guys have stuff like that that you do too uh, while you're not running your business? Brian, can you interpret for them, please? Yes, I'm doing that. Okay. Last time is the combo party for Sammy Baran. Sammy Baran. Baran is in a business now, Sammy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So after the chapter, I think we in language. When we meet in the company in Kenya, then the family balance in terms of men and the in the state, in the country, in the so, question on your phone that you much touch on your know, life, the balance, like being to be a cop, right? Okay, of course, business, like balancing between business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, 
Okay, like if of course, boys is me. How do you overcome it? Operation. Mm-hmm. I am not Okay, um, so I'm getting different responses here. So uh, some are saying that when they they are faced with uh, the situation where they have to balance between uh, business and life, and when things are hard, they they resort to going to church. Some also sing, and uh, some just take time to to reflect by sleeping. <laughs> Not that it's a bad idea, no. But uh, it takes, uh, like Coach, uh, like Matilda here says that she she takes some time to just sleep and rest uh, so that she finds herself. Yeah. Yeah, sleep is good. <laughs> when I can get it, sleep is good. Um, so I think the other thing, the other two things that I would really like you guys to take away from all this, if they haven't covered it anywhere else, is one of the things that I've learned over and over again since I started this journey is that if something isn't working, it's okay to change, right? So if you were doing one thing and then it's still not working, it's okay to kind of step back and be like, okay, I know I've been doing this this one way but maybe it's time to try something else, right? Because I think sometimes we get so caught up in, but this is what I've always done, that this is what I'm gonna to continue to do. But I think it's kind of important to step back and think, is it time to try something new and see if it'll get different results or do the same thing, but do it a little bit differently and see if that gets different results. So like I know from another boot camp, somebody was selling rice and she was like, well, instead of selling them in big bags, I'll sell them in small bags so people can afford to buy them daily instead of buying more because they don't have that much money all the time. So it's something like that, right? Like you don't have to change everything you're doing, but is there something you can change in what you're doing to make more money and be more successful, even if it means, you know, changing things up a little bit. So I don't know if anybody mentioned that along the way, but I think that's one of the bigger lessons that I've learned that I would definitely want you guys to take away from it is that, you know, it's okay to kind of try something new and see what works because that's that's just how it is. Sometimes you have to try more than one thing and, and see what's gonna work for you. Um, and then I think the other thing too <clears throat> is to ask for help, right? So um, we make we have a lot of people that we've met because we knew somebody else. And they're like, hey, do you need help with your website? You should check out these people. So if there's somebody around you where you guys could like share customers because they buy this, but they also buy this, maybe you could talk to them about actually partnering together so you guys can both be more successful. I'm sorry for my son providing a sound check in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so I think that's the big thing too, right? You should figure out how you can let, you can use the people around you to do better for both of you, because if it's a win-win situation, then everybody gets something out of it. So I think that's something worth considering if there's anybody around you that could possibly help you, but you help them in return, that's definitely something that you should be considering. <laughs> But I said we couldn't do it. Ooh. Did they get all that? I want to make sure I'm not going too fast. No, you are. You are. You are just okay. You are right on okay. track. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So I mean, do they have any other questions? I mean, I'm happy to answer any other questions that they might have 
had along the way that maybe didn't get answered yet? Okay. Uh, so Patricia, uh, they have a question for you. So uh, they are saying that they are having one of the challenges. Uh, one of the challenges that they are facing right now is that uh, the intonation of Zambia, uh, we are having a, a challenge of inflation and prices are always going up, uh, fuel prices. Uh, and that trickles down to transport. Um, mm makes a lot of things uh, become costly. Uh, so their, their challenge uh, is that when they go to order those stuff, uh, they find that the products, if they were maybe ordering them for, let's say a thousand dollars, the next time they go there, they find that it's maybe, uh, maybe $1,200 now or uh, $1,300 now. So What's your take on that? Like, what should they do? What advice can you give them? Um, I mean, that's tricky, right? Because I think everybody's answer to inflation is to raise the prices of everything, right? So you were charging this, you bought it for this much, you sell it to this much to the person. And I think that's pretty much the easiest answer to be like, raise your prices. But I understand that's easier said than done because if you're working with people who haven't who can't even who could barely afford what you're selling now raising your prices is only going to make it harder for them to buy from you so i understand that raise your prices is not an answer that's going to work across the board so i think in, if that's the case it's time to get more creative in seeing what you can offer to still make the money without necessarily having to come out of pocket more so for example if you're selling something and it costs this much, what can you add to that that may not cost as much money, but raises the value in what you're selling, right? So I think if people, if you tell people you raised your prices, but it you have another reason, not just I raised my prices for the sake of raising prices, then it's easier for them to accept the higher price. The trick is to figure out how to add the value without increasing your costs. And i it's hard for me to give a, an example that fits every single person, but I think the idea is to try to get creative on how you can kind of deliver the same but better without adding more materials because the materials is where the cost comes in, right? So you have to think of how you can shift what you're doing to maybe add the value there and increase the price a little bit to offset what you're paying without necessarily making them feel that they're paying more for the sake of paying more, because I think that's where everybody gets a little bit upset, right? When they feel like, so you're basically just passing all the costs to me, the person who's buying from you, as opposed to trying to think, how can you create a better experience without putting out as much as you've been putting out so you can keep a little bit more in the back? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Let me just uh, translate that for them. Okay. Uh, so, uh... Inflation, now we but what she's suggesting is that, uh, for example, 
business in years and new machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I've been to Vajura. Sometimes in Kapo Mogura, name Mogu is something. People will run away because of the number of Mogura. And the, so, I think I'm a circular strategy. Yeah, my name is. Uh, so that you not be saying that no, because but also uh, in a vein good having a son of for example, not in good let's say yeah, mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah, could try and increase the price, say one kg is a 20 and 25. What you can do is that maybe, uh, not really that. <laughs> hey, one kg, one kg, same guy. Oh, I So, just like, so maybe you could face a strategy in such a way that you can fuck up at 25. Maybe my example to end. That's when you put on a plastic man, but what's on plastic? But this was plastic in fifteen days. But the amenity that save it, the minimum is not good. Plastic. The example is a mugati. The example is a mugati. My friend, go for standard. My quality are young standard. Maybe my mother. Mumpeki. Man, but but no. If I go commute, but you make me sure that. Is a minimum to not wait. See the modern cost yarn, six to increase my cost, but Munkara chase strategy to chart the levers into that. For example, in an example in the person, I mean, I'm going to come up and do it. I think they have to do a section, maybe you make a basket. No, no, I'm sure it's my end of my basket. Sugar, I think we they get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. In a question. Yeah. 
Singa pays the one thousand. The the secret is that the manager efforts. I mean, ma faka kuunga kuri ma problem. If singa use me in business, singa change. But we are just too comfortable. Okay, uh, so uh, they had asked me a question, but uh, I think I've answered that because we covered okay. it in one of, the, one of the lessons that we had. Uh, okay. With John. Yeah, so we had one of the coaches last session, so he gave us a, a few insights into, into a similar questions that uh, they had asked. So I'll just respond to them. Okay. Yes. So they, they, however, there's one question which they have. What is your number one Number one uh, strategy for growing, like what, if you were to mention one thing that is key to growing your business, what, what is that one thing? My number one tip is to focus on relationships, right? So whether you're talking about relationships with your customers, which a lot of my customers end up being like ongoing relationships. I have somebody that I've been working with for seven years now, I think, and she's referred people to me and, you know, she comes to me anytime she needs help or whether you're talking about relationships in terms of people that can refer clients to you, even if they've never hired you, that's been our number one, um, our number one means of bringing people in the door is other people referring them to us. And we actually have somebody the person that I met Adam through I joke that he's the best salesperson I've never hired because he sent us so many people and they all have been great they basically all been great clients so I think the best thing that you can do is focus on your relationships with your clients with people who do business similar but not exactly the same as you that you might be able to share customers or with your family like the relationships are going to be a big thing in helping you grow and maintain your business because they're a source of support and basically whatever you would need for your business, having the right relationships can help you make that happen. That's true. Thank you, Anka. So number one, number one uh, strategy yeah, to business is building on my relationships. Whether so my relationships between even my customers or even my my suppliers, even my partners, uh, because uh, relationship uh, goes a long way. Why? Imagine you go and somebody is that same mind. And what will cause me to come to the work with Matilda and not go to the work with Chilibi is relationship. I was giving an example one time in training the presence of things that my classes are in marketing. Now when I set up with the mama vet and I'm saying, you find that bones is in your mind, almost you want some bazi, but in front of the glory, I will not eat our mind. You go through and then you might go to Monica. But you can gain a she wants to open baby. But sometimes you, because of the relationship, the name match that you get more than you, you find that you go and buy. Sometimes, see, Monica, I'm going to show you now. Could you even go in a cafe here and come back to the PS for a week? But when you come to the market, you can get in the party because of what? I think they get that. <laughs> Yeah. 
No, I think uh, right now they, they don't have a lot of uh, questions. Uh, they are saying that they ask as, as the session goes on. All right, so um, if they do not have more questions for now, um, Patricia, could you just um, maybe some sort of advice for them? Because I think this is the last session we'll be having with you, right? Mm. Yeah, so let's just tell them something, some sort of encouragement, advice, strategies you know would help mold their businesses and promote their brands and all that. I think from there, they might have one or two questions to ask afterwards. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I mean, I mentioned that my number one tip is obviously working on relationships, but I yeah. think the other thing that relationships really come in handy is that you know growing a business especially with a family can be really challenging sometimes and i think that one of the other ways those relationships could pay off is having somebody that you can turn to when things aren't going well and have them be able to say it's okay i just went through that here's how i got through it or it's okay you can totally do this because sometimes all you need is a pep talk from somebody who's been there or is currently going through it at the same time as you to kind of get you back on the right path right because you know yeah. i've been doing this for 12 years and some days are easier than others like when you're trying to do a call around the toddler that won't stop talking um you know <laughs> you, some yeah. days are easier than others and having the right people around you it makes like a huge difference when you're like i just want to give up i don't want to do this anymore having somebody come to you say no you can do this i know you can do this why don't we try this or have you thought about this yet and having somebody that can you know, see it from a different perspective because you've been looking at it for too long and you can't see the right thing anymore. Or just again, having somebody pat you in the back and say, you've been so great so far, you could totally do this. Like, I think people kind of underestimate the impact of having somebody there beside you that can be like, no, this is fine. Everything's fine. You can totally do this to kind of help you get back on the right path. So yeah, that's what that's, that's one of the big things that I would, suggest is just making sure that you have that support system there to help you whether it means helping you get more sales or helping you when you're having a bad day like having that right support system can make a huge difference all right thank you so um i would just like to add this uh, there, do you, what challenges have you encountered over the year you said you've heard um 12 years of experience running a business and now you have a family to run also so these are women definitely if not all of them at least most of them have a family to also run aside their business so what are some of the challenges you've heard that i know they might be having too so we know how we can overcome or um how we, did I break off there? Yeah, a little. Okay, so I was saying, um, I want you to share your own personal experiences on the challenges you've had because they are also women. And so uh, the, the shoes they are wearing presently so that they know how to cope those challenges, how to walk themselves through all that. So that's just it. Is that okay? Is that okay? Um, yeah, Bernard, is that okay for you. them? All right, okay. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, yeah. so I, uh, when me and my sister, who I work with, when we started our business, we didn't have any kids. And since we started the business 12 years ago, we've added five kids to the mix between the two of us. So mm. definitely there are challenges to being a mom and trying to run a business. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things is just kind of like, when you're having a hard time at home, but you still have to show up for your business, like how do you handle that, right? Like I think a lot of times you're like, I don't feel like doing this, the kids are sick, I have to do this, but I still have to do this. And so I think a big part of that is just being realistic in what you can do. Like, okay, you had all these plans for today, but now three of the kids are sick and now you can't do all those things. So I think 
a good thing to a, a, a one way to approach that is to kind of look at okay well if i can't do all these things what can i still do and not feeling like it's all or nothing right because i think especially as a small business owner sometimes when things don't quite work out the way you plan it's easy to just say okay well that was a waste of time i'm not gonna do it but that's not the case sometimes something is better than nothing so you were gonna go to the market to try to make sales for five hours but you can't do that how about one hour how about two hours like i think it's important to be flexible and think about like what you can do today without feeling like well if i can't do it all then it's not worth doing at all no that's not true you can still do something so whatever you can do it's okay that you didn't get to do what you thought and to just accept that maybe today is going to look a little bit different right and i think no matter what business you're in and no matter what your family circumstances look like that's an important thing to be able to accept sometimes today does not look like what you thought it would look like and that's okay you could try again tomorrow you could do something differently again tomorrow but i think keeping in mind that being able to be flexible so that you can do what needs to be done without going crazy <laughs> is a good thing to be that's a good skill to be able to have as a mother trying to run a business it's accepting that sometimes things have to look a little bit different and that's okay okay all right thank you so i i don't know do you have any questions bernard do the women have any questions on what she just shared let me just uh, do a little translation then we'll see okay yes so Okay, so from twelve years ago, more is it been one by an assistant? But he wants a little bit of an effect of smooth like that. But a command of Navana at the one of our kids, one of our people, a movie of the fight. Oh, it's not more than running a movie. So my priority is my children. My kids are not doing well, but they think about it. Business, my everything. I'm not doing much. I'm not doing much business. So it was hard to face, but it shows. Ah, I'm doing. Okay, I'm feeling my own business. And one way, I'm going to get a job. 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 Where I'm in Yama, when it's Islam, is that I'm in a right supposed to be in Yama. So the Kakosa, I'm in a long time in Yama, I'm in a long time. So the right supposed to be in Yama, the right supposed to be in Yama. I'm going to tell you my doctor. I'm going to tell you my doctor. I'm going to tell you my doctor. Maputo ya nangari mkakosi mbunuzi. I'll give an example. Sini nje kwa nangoo hili. Kuliwe nina nangoo hizo kuda na mamoto wa. Nifi mabuko nje lanchi. So, I would look at that always. Kananchi wa kuja mabuko na kuda na kandukina kwa mwini. I would get a book for matematika. And so that's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what I'm supposed to do. Mommy's almost done. Don't finish your juice. Mommy's almost done. I think that uh, the same thing is that I'm not going to do my exam. I'm looking to go to my coaching team. For me, I'm not going to do that. So, 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 that's the cover of the show. And then make sure that if you want to break down, sometimes you can call that. You look at you can giving up and you want to do that. Opposition from any movie, then I'm welcome back. You can carry on with your life. So that's what I'm going to do. Support. I think they they get that. Okay. 
right, thank you. So, um, um, Patricia, you we mentioned have, again. We also have one question. Okay, okay. Uh, so, Patricia, uh, is there anything that you do apart from business? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> like you, have, you, have your, you have your business, um, and then you have the family, but is there anything else apart from the two? Um, you mean like, what do I spend my time doing when I'm not working? Yes. I watch a lot of music videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. I spend a lot of time <laughs> on YouTube watching um, music videos in Korean. It's a, it's a weird hobby that I picked up from my twin sister. <laughs> Korean so music. You're swing. <laughs> yeah and i watch a lot of um like asian tv shows also that yeah. i don't understand but that's what subtitles are for <laughs> that's what i you do in my spare time <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so um i think what patricia is just trying to um, encourage the women to do is don't spend all your time on work 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 mm -hmm. work Okay, sometimes take a break. Mm. Take a break so you don't break down. Exactly. I'm a, yeah, I'm a mom too. I, I've got two. <laughs> and one is still very tender. He's just seven months old. Wow. And so I try to take um I try to take breaks in between my, my work um schedule so that I do not break down. So you should try and do the same too. It does you don't need to go on a vacation before you rest. <laughs> Could just you could just take a few minutes to sleep, okay, and then tell the children, please, mommy wants to sleep. Let mommy have some rest. Or you could go visit uh, someone else, take a stroll, just eat a bowl of salad, anything to just get your mind off work. And you know, one good thing with resting is when you are resting, you will get more ideas to mm. improve your business, and so you are going to gain a lot from taking those short breaks okay so patricia thank you so much for that point and another thing i would like us to discuss is um you mentioned partnership okay and um, from what i can see these women are in the same geographical location i don't think they live too far apart from each other and so in what ways can you encourage them to form some sort of alliance together uh, like um um what did I write down? Yeah, referral method. I think that you learned, um, Bernard, we treated marketing with you, you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was when John Oman took the um, uh, session. And so we've learned on marketing, we learned referral method. And then since they mentioned things being extremely expensive, there's a hike in the prices of so many commodities. So what would you encourage them to do, knowing that we are working, we are building a network. I can see um, six um, entrepreneurs here. So how can we help them build a network of these six entrepreneurs so that um, the hike in price, the inflation doesn't, you know, crumble one person's business. So how can we achieve that? Thank you. From your own experience. Right. So, I mean, I think when I mentioned about adding value, you can look at how you can partner with other people to provide something that other people don't do. So for example, in my business, we do websites in seven days and most people are like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. How can mm. you do that? And so the fact that we do that makes us stand out. So if there's two of you whose products kind of go together, then maybe you two could partner and offer those two things together. And that's not something anyone else does. So that would make you the person that they go to for that kind of thing. Cause they're like, oh, it's easier for me. I can go to one person and get two things that I need instead of having to go to multiple places. So I think you can kind of try to look at what each other does and see if there's a way that makes sense that you can tie your stuff together and see if that's gonna work for both of you. And if not, then you try something else. But I think that it's definitely worth looking into to see how you can partner with the people in your network to provide something new to the people that are buying from you. Because again, that would justify a more value and a higher price with them realizing that they're getting more for their money and it's not more expensive for the sake of being more expensive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Bernard, did they get out? Do you need to interpret? 
I will need to interpret. Okay. Yeah, so um, I come back to I'm actually going now with some time. For example, this is a book of one thing. Yeah, so uh, I must have been in a website. So, for example, we in a multi center in a website. My own app. In organization in a website. Okay, so, when Tom and repeat, I start to replace them. And they have in the business, yeah. So, it was going to be very common because it's because I was going to be a chairman of the Palazzo from an internet. So, the woman who knows the people who are there. My own app. <laughs> so, um, so, no no mami is a computer to be into the So, for example, Ed, you chat me to say, you know, one of the one month. So, Ed, I like the partner of the so someone feels like ah, I can pay because uh, if if I'm charging a five hundred and it's supposed to be three fifty, I can pay one because that is the one. So we are minimum some more and then a person that in order for him for her to be able to do it fast and it's a person. So if you come out say see the person is not for the person just for the internet, that's in the past. All right, um I think they get that. All right, thank you so much, Bernard. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you. We're almost um, at the end of the session. So I want us to do a little bit of some practicals, okay? So, um, uh, Bernard, just pick maybe two of the entrepreneurs and let them tell if, if they can speak directly to us better if they want to speak through you like they speak and then you interpret it still okay let them tell you what strategies that they think they can um, work on or use to improve their business um, i don't know if you got that what what strategies they can use yes yeah. personally they should personalize it Okay, I'm a, um, I'm a hairdresser. What am I going to do to improve sales or to boost sales for myself? I sell food items. What am I going to do? They should personalize it. All right. Can you move? <laughs> okay, move. Oh, I see. You a point. Oh, better, better. You can't touch my computer. Just sit right there. So, all of our men is what is about in life and what is in life in the case. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hi. Hello. I'm Matilda. Hi, Matilda. I'm into second hand clothes. Okay. Yeah, I sell children's wear. 
So the strategy that I'm, I'm trying to use to improve on my business, because at the moment, because of the economy, it is going higher every time. So I've decided to change the way, the things that I, I order. Uh, I, 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 I usually order bells, big bells. Okay. Now I've realized that you're taking too much time to finish. Mm. So instead of change, I let the others in Lusaka where I get my boots, when they order and they open, then I pick the best from what they open. Mm. <laughs> I pick the best because when you order the whole bell, the, the possibility of finding bad things is there. So I let yeah. them order, they open and I pick the best. That's, they're the ones that I bring to my business. So that instead of losing out because of the high prices, I use the same standard. I don't change the same price. Uh, and I've decided to change the location. Where I was, I've decided to move closer to the people where everybody can see my goods. So I pick if it's truck bottoms for the children, I pick a suit, I hang them to attract my customers. Then my business will grow instead of going down now, it's going down. Mm. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So Patricia, do you have anything to say to her? She that's so brilliant. That's so brilliant. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. And honestly, I think what you said about hanging the suits makes a lot of sense, right? Because it's all about presentation. And yeah. when people see it up rather than having it be folded, they're like, oh, that looks good. I want to buy that. Like presentation is everything and it takes a little bit more time but it makes a huge huge difference when you're seeing it like up and you can see the whole thing at one time rather than just passing by it and it happened to be folded on a table so I think that makes a lot of sense that's that's a good job for you yep thank you uh you're doing so well Matilda congrats <laughs> you're gonna make beautiful sales <laughs> okay uh, um who's speaking next So uh, we have uh, Mafuizo at the far end. Uh, she's saying that uh, the strategy that she... <laughs> so that she's saying that the strategy that she's... Uh, she has implemented in a business that she learned from these sessions is that uh, she is trying to anticipate her customers' needs. And in order to do that, uh, when she orders things, uh, previously she just used to go order uh, different things that she finds, then she comes and then tries to sell those things. But she discovered that it was taking time for them to finish. So this time she developed a strategy where she, when she, before going to order, she asks, uh, what the customers would like and then she writes that down and then when going to order she orders the exact things that that customer wants uh, it comes down to color size and uh, style mm -hmm. so she sells uh, kitchen utensils uh, they're usually plastic made out of plastic so they come in all shapes and sizes so that's the strategy that she's developed. She asks them, then she writes them down, and then she goes to order the exact things. And it has proven out to work effectively. All right, Patricia, over to you. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a great idea, right? Because, yeah. you know, the, 
reason that we do websites in seven days is because we found that people sometimes needed things that quickly. And when you listen to what people want, it's easier to make the sale because they've already told you, hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. And when you provide that to them, then all the more that they're going to be like, oh, look, somebody who actually listens to what I want, I should come back and buy some more from them. Because instead of coming here, hoping there'll be something I need or want, I already know when I show up that there'll be something waiting for me. So I think it's a really good that you picked up on that and that it's going to pay off, right? Because when you listen yeah. to your customers and you meet your customers where they are, that's what keeps them coming back. And it's always mm -hmm. easier to keep somebody coming back than to bring somebody new on all the time because these people already know you they already trust you and they're more likely to want to buy from you so i think it's a really good idea that you've decided to listen to what they want and try to meet them there because that makes everything easier for everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. thank you thank you and I, I, i'm so proud of the entrepreneurs because it shows that um they've gone to practice what they've been taught because she's speaking on value proposition, right? That's value proposition yeah. she's speaking on. Yeah, knowing the needs of your, uh, of your clients, Absolutely. of your customers, and then looking for ways you can be of, um, of service to them, meeting them at the point of their need. That is what she is doing, and she's doing it so wonderfully well. So it shows that we are on track, we're doing the right things, and you entrepreneurs are doing so wonderfully well. And we know that um, with soon we're going to have so many beautiful testimonies coming in from your end. And so we celebrate you, we celebrate your business, your family. Every effort of yours will never be wasted, okay? You're doing so well. And Patricia, thank Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't know. Do you have any final words for them before we take a picture and then maybe pray if you're okay with that? So do you have something to say to us? Um, I think, you know, my final words is, like you said, I'm very proud of you guys for showing up and listening to what, you know, the coaches have to say to you and actually implementing it in your business. Because I think a lot of people get caught up in the learning, but then forget to actually go out and do it. Mm. And so I'm really proud of you guys for taking the time to learn and then taking the time to apply that to your business and seeing yourself be more successful by implementing these strategies. So I, you know, I just know you guys are going to do great things. And I'm really proud of you guys for being a part of the program and really seeing it through. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, I want us to take a quick picture. So everyone just smile, just smile. All right, I got that. Thank you so much. So um, Patricia, do you mind? We want to say some prayers, is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, all right, so in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for bringing us here together again. Thank you for everything the entrepreneurs have learned. Thank you for the coaches that I've been coming here to teach us from their wealth of knowledge, sharing their personal experiences with us. Father, we are so appreciative of all these things that you do for us. And then we ask God that you give these entrepreneurs the strength to be able to carry on their various businesses. We wish them beautiful sales. We pray that the strength that they will need for their businesses will be granted unto them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Hi. <laughs> you did so well, Bernard. I'm so proud of them. It shows that they're not just listening, you know. They're not just listening, but they're actually doing what was taught and I know um, if, when the coaches hear this, when Adam hears this, when everyone else in the organization hears this, they're going to be super proud of them.
and you are doing an awesome job coordinating them over from them, bringing them together, just to let you know that we appreciate you and let the women know that we appreciate their presence too. We do not take this for granted. So do have a wonderful day and we'll see you when next we meet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. We also All appreciate right. it. Very All much. right. Thank okay. You. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.